All right, guys. Thank you again for coming. This is Mr. Zawacki, and today we're going to be focusing on cell structures and functions. So first of all, as you learn, um, and also you'll learn when you do your egg lab, um, there are two types of cells on Earth. That's it. There are only two types. There's the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. So I want you to look at these, and I want you to tell me at least one difference between the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. So tell me one thing that, that they are different and what makes them different from each other. Okay, yeah, definitely with eukaryotic having a nucleus. Be careful with the prokaryotic in the cell wall because the eukaryotic cell can also have a cell wall. But the nucleus is a big difference. Prokaryotic cells don't have complex structures. Right, Josh? Um, prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus. Yep, good job, Hunter. One can have a cell, the flagellum. Uh -huh. Mitochondria is a big difference between the two. Good. So when we think of small, simple um, cells, we're thinking of the prokaryotic cell, this one on the left. Prokaryotic cells are very small. They're simple. They're like a bacteria cell. So that's a good way to think about it. When you think of prokaryotic, think of like the earliest cell on Earth. It was very simple and it's called bacteria, and that was a very, really the first living thing on Earth was a bacteria cell that was prokaryotic. Until a few more evolution and millions of years took place, then you got your eukaryotic cell. These are more advanced. They're bigger. They have more stuff to them. They can grow more larger organisms. So the eukaryotic is like plants, or animal cells. Also, fungus um, is going to be the same thing for eukaryotic. So we also have fungus. So as you can see, the older primitive cell is the prokaryotic cell. There's DNA inside of it. There are ribosomes inside of it. So this is what they have in common. They have this. They have a cytoplasm, they have a cell membrane, they have a cell wall, but that's about it. The eukaryotic cell has all of that, too, but they have extra things. They have a nucleus. The other one doesn't. They have endoplasmic reticulum. The other one doesn't. They have uh, mitochondria. The other one doesn't. They have a lysosome. They have Golgi bodies. So what I need you guys to get from here is that the prokaryotic cell came first. It's smaller, it's simpler, it's still on Earth today, but it's mostly bacteria. That's it. Whereas the eukaryotic cell is much bigger, such as fungus, plant, or animal cells, um, and they will be much more complex, and they are much more advanced and probably evolved from the prokaryotic cell. For those of you who have taken the honors lesson about the endosymbiosis, that's what they're talking about, how the prokaryotic cell eventually evolved to the eukaryotic cell. All right, so now we're just going to focus on this right here. We're going to focus on this cell for the rest of the day. So we're done with prokaryotic. We just know it's very small, simple, like bacteria. It has cell wall, cell membrane, uh, DNA, cytoplasm, and ribosomes. That's about it. But now today is all about the eukaryotic cell. And remember, that's animal cells, that's plant cells, that's fungus cells. But we're going to look at just the animal cells first. So we're going to take these four, the nucleus, nucleolus, cytoplasm, and cell membrane, and talk about those first. So the nucleus, that's, I put that as number one because that is the most important organelle inside the cell. It's the control center. 
it's the brain. It, it really controls everything in our, in our cells, in our bodies. It holds our genetic information, DNA, inside of it. So all of our codes, like all of our instruction manuals, which is our DNA, that's found inside the nucleus. So that's why it's very important. The nucleolus is the center of the nucleus, and it helps make ribosomes. And that kind of deals with RNA. So DNA, RNA, ribosomes, a lot of them are in the same place. We should know what the cell membrane is. That's pretty easy. It's the boundary of the cell, and it controls what enters and exits in the cell. It's also made up of a lipid bilayer. Remember here the macromolecule, lipids. So this part of the cell is lipid. It has transport proteins, so sometimes you see proteins that look like that on the cell membrane, helping with transport. It also has cholesterol, so remember it's a double membrane for the cell membrane. Cholesterol is going to be inside in the middle of the cell membrane. And it has carbohydrate markers. They look like little flags that stick out that mark parts of the cell membrane. So we know what the cell membrane is. It's just the outside of the, it's the boundary of the cell. But you need to know some other things that are inside of it. Like the lipid is, makes up the layers. Transport proteins, they help with transport. Cholesterol helps, this is a healthy cholesterol. This helps with bringing things in and out of the cell easily. And then carbohydrate markers, these are the things that signal different things. So just know about the cell membrane and the pieces that make up the cell membrane. And then last, the cytoplasm, that's the jelly-like fluid inside the cell. So here's your nucleus, here's your nucleolus. So nucleus is number one. Nucleolus is number two. Cell membrane is out here for number three. And the cytoplasm is just the space inside the cell. That would be number four. Yep, good point, Joshua. Yes, that's what they do. They also help things move through the cell membrane um, with or without energy. But yes, they definitely help with movement. That's why they're embedded inside the cell membrane as little transport proteins. All right, so we got, we did that. We did the nucleus. We did the nucleolus. We did the cytoplasm. We did the cell membrane. And now for ribosomes. Ribosomes look like little dots. As you can see, these little pink dots. They look like little freckles or chicken box around the whole entire cell. Well, ribosomes are one of the smallest organelles, and they make protein. This is what they do, 100%. They are geared to making protein. They're found in all cells. Remember, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So they're found in everything. <clears throat> it's because ribosomes make protein. And every single cell has ribosomes and protein and RNA. Every single cell. All right. Next is the smooth ER. And the rough ER, here is your smooth ER, and here is your rough, part of your rough ER there. Does anybody know the difference between smooth ER and rough ER before I get into it? Well, I'll explain it. The, in terms of the endoplasmic reticulum, which is called the ER, the nickname is roads. They're like little folds and roads where things move around the cell. And their function is the internal delivery system of the cell. So it's just like the highways or the roads of the cell. There are two types. There's the rough ER and the smooth. Here's your difference. Rough ER has ribosomes. That's why it's rough. Smooth ER 
no ribosomes. We know ribosomes make protein, right? So the rough ER also makes proteins. That's why it has ribosomes. The smooth ER makes actually fats or lipids. That's what it does. So there's your two differences. The rough ER has ribosomes. Smooth ER does not. The rough ER makes proteins because of that. The smooth ER makes lipids. There's your big differences. So we went over all of those so far. Adding another one is the Golgi complex. And also lysosomes. Got to add that one on this one. But we're also going to talk about lysosomes. So Golgi complex and lysosomes. Golgi is kind of similar to like FedEx or UPS or your United States Postal Service. They're the shippers. They're going to package, modify, and transport materials to different locations inside or out of the cell. That's what your Golgi does. Think of it like a packaging distribution center. And they look like a stack of pancakes. Lysosomes are different. So this one kind of looks like this. Lysosomes just look like, they're just like circular sacs. They're not really crazy looking. The lysosomes are your cleanup crews, or I like to call them the stomach of the cell. Lysosome is very similar to your stomach. Why? Look at it. It breaks down food into particles the rest of the cell can use and to destroy old cells. So that's why they're called the stomach or the cleanup crew of the cell, because they break down particles so the rest of the cell can use it. So think of lysosomes like the stomach of the cell, and think of the Golgi complex like the shippers or the UPS or FedEx. And then we cannot forget mitochondria, which actually I think is one of the most important parts as well. They're all pretty important. But the mitochondria is called the powerhouse. Why is it called the powerhouse? It's because it makes energy for the cell. Power, energy. That's what mitochondria does. If we didn't have mitochondria, we would have no energy. We wouldn't be able to move. The mitochondria actually helps do cellular respiration, and it breaks down food to make ATP. I don't know if you guys got to that in lesson 204 yet, but ATP is the unit of energy that we use. So like, for example, if you were to go running, um, you'd use 100 ATP. To sit up, that's 5 ATP. To walk upstairs, that's 20 ATP. Every single thing is a unit of energy to do something. And mitochondria gives us ATP energy. So that's what it's there for. It's the major fuel for all cell activities that require energy. So the main thing you need to know about mitochondria, it's the powerhouse because it makes energy for us. And the unit of energy is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And here's what mitochondria looks like. Imagine it like a peanut. Very close, right? So imagine like a double layer peanut. So we got two layers, and then we have an outer membrane and an inner membrane, and then the cristae and the matrix is in the center of the mitochondria. So that's what a mitochondria looks like. Pretty simple looking. Just make sure you know what it looks like. All right, so going back here, I'm also going to put in lysosomes. All right, so now for a little bit of participation. The answer is going to be one of those that are up there about the animal cell. Which one makes lipids or fats? Out of all those, which one makes lipids or fats? 
Very good. Hunter, Joshua, Marcus, you guys paying attention. Good job. Good. So we'll get rid of that one. Which one remaining is the space inside the cell? Which one's the space inside the cell? Just the space. Yep. Good job, Marcus, Hunter, Joshua. Cytoplasm. Yep. It will be cytoplasm. That's the space inside the cell. Which one is the smallest organelle and it makes protein? Good job. Those are all your ribosomes. Yep. And all these are organelles, by the way, organs inside the cell. Yes, ribosomes are the smallest organelle that make protein. Which one contains, this is a tough one, which one contains ribosomes and makes protein? Good job, rough ER. Good. Which one, okay, yep, yeah, all rough ER, good work. Which one remaining? is the FedEx or package and distribution center of the cell. Good job. That's the Golgi. Yep, very good. And then between the last three, which one is the brain or control center of the whole cell? Nucleus. Good. We know the nucleolus is the center of the nucleus that helps, you know, um, also control some of its functions. What do lysosomes do again? That's the last, well, besides mitochondria and cell membrane. What do lysosomes do? Good, Joshua. Yeah, they break down food. They, they're like the stomach of the cell, right? They break down food and use the particles for it. We know the cell membrane is the boundary of the cell, and then the mitochondria is the powerhouse because it makes energy for us. Does anybody know what unit of energy our bodies use or all animals use? What's the unit called? Yep, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that's what mitochondria does for us. It gives us and helps us contain energy. That's the animal cell. That's what we need to know. Good job. All right. So now the plant cell. Pretty similar. There's a lot of things they have in common, but I'll go over the differences. Here is one difference. This is called a vacuole. Vacuoles are the storage tank. They store water. Animal cells also have vacuoles, believe it or not. But plant cell, so for the plant cell, it's one big, huge vacuole that stores water. For an animal cell, they're much smaller. They look like, they almost look like lysosomes. They're much smaller and spread out around the cell. So they both have vacuoles, but one big central vacuole for plant cells, a lot of little ones for animal cells. So that's what helps make lettuce crisp. But when there is no water, that's when the plant wilts. That's when the vacuole dries up. So that's a difference. Here's another difference. Chloroplast. Chloroplast traps energy from the sun to produce food for the plant. So chloroplasts are the main thing that does photosynthesis. I know we've heard of the word photosynthesis before, but in biology we're going to get a little more in depth about it. First of all, it's done by chloroplasts. The, the, this is the organelle that completes photosynthesis. And they're green in color because of chlorophyll, which is a green pigment. So that's where chloroplasts are and what they do. They're green. They help do photosynthesis. They make food for the plant cell. And they're green because there's chlorophyll, which is the green pigment. Here's what chloroplasts look like. Look, they look like they kind of look like mitochondria, but they're green. 
and there's two parts inside, or actually three. Stroma is just the space. Stroma space. Thylakoid is the um, the connector between the grana and the grana are like the stacks of like pennies on each other. So those are the three parts of a chloroplast: stroma, thylakoid, and grana. And then the cell wall. The cell wall, chloroplast, and vacuole are really the three differences between the plant and animal cell. These are the big two, though, because an animal cell will never have a chloroplast and will never have a cell wall, which is an additional boundary. See how there's one, two boundaries? The inside one is the cell membrane. The outside one is the cell wall. So plant cells have an additional boundary. That's a big difference that animal cells don't have. Their cell wall provides support and protection to the cell membrane. And it's found outside of the cell membrane. So if this is the cell here, here's your nucleus, here's your nucleolus. So your cell membrane is here. Then you have another boundary, and that's where your cell wall is. So cell membrane is inside of the cell wall. And then you have your nucleus inside of that. And then you have your nucleolus, which is the center of the sun. So just make sure you're not confused about the different layers. Most of it is for protection. All right. So here we go again. Um, we're going to go over just a few more of these plant cell things. This is what you see in the plant cell. Um, which one produces food for the plant cell? Which one produces food? Which one's going to give that plant cell food? Good job, Hunter, Francesca, Ciara. Yeah, you, you guys got it. Very good. The chloroplast is the one that does photosynthesis. It's the one that gives food for the plant cell. Which one is the storage tank for water for the plant cell? Yeah, we got it. That would be the vacuole for that one. And which one is the extra boundary for support and protection? Great job. That would be the cell wall. Everything else we already went over. Remember, plant and animal cells, they're both eukaryotic cells, so they're pretty similar. But your main differences are here, here, in here. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. So let's compare plant and animal cells. Um, we know that they have lots of things in common. They both have a nucleus. They both have mitochondria. They both have a cell membrane. They both have ribosomes. I'm not going to say all of them, but we, we get the idea here. They both have um, lysosomes. And they both have ER, too, endoplasmic reticulum, both smooth and rough. So what are the three big differences, or what are at least the two big differences that plant cells have that animal cells don't? Can you guys help me fill out that part? What are some things that plant cells have that animal cells don't? Good job, Danielle. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, good. Francesca, good job. Joshua, Hunter, Nick. Yeah, very good. Cell so wall and the chloroplast. Those are your big two differences. You could say they got one big vacuole for plant and many small vacuoles, so we can put that one big vacuole. 
these are small vacuoles here. So that works. That's fine. Um, does anybody know something else that animal? I didn't go over this. So if you do know this, I'll be impressed. Um, does anybody know something that an animal cell has that a plant cell does not? There is one. Yeah, well, the shape is, uh, it can sometimes be the same, though. You, but that's a good guess. But yeah, sometimes they can be the same. Anybody else want to try to guess? No, they, they actually both have mitochondria. Still, they, they do have mitochondria. That's another good guess. No, they both have cytoplasm. Yeah, this is one I didn't go over yet. And but you'll learn about it in, in module three when we talk about when cells divide. This organelle helps animal cells divide, but plant cells don't have this. Animal cells have these little things called centrioles, and they look like two cylinders that are beside each other. And animal cells have them, and plant cells don't. That's really the only thing that animal cells have that plant cells don't. You can also say they have small, little vacuoles, and plant cells have one big vacuole. But right there, guys, that's a good picture of, of the differences and similarities between the cells. Remember, they're both eukaryotic. They both have many things in common. The plant cell is going to have the cell wall and the chloroplast. Animal cell won't. An animal cell will have a centriole, and a plant cell won't. All right. So, guys, I hope you learned about all these organelles that we went over today. Um, also, I hope you guys learned about the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell and how they are all different as well. Um, it's important to know that and all the organelles of the cell. That's what you're going to learn about in 202 and 203. So thank you guys again for coming. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can put them in the bottom. If not, um, you guys are free to go. So thank you guys again, and we'll see you here next week. Talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration.